A new page has been turned in the security situation surrounding Iraq's capital city. The first joint security station in the Dora district of Baghdad and will house the Iraqi National Police, National Guard, and the Iraqi Army. Colonel Brian Roberts, the commander of the 1st Cavalry Division's 2nd Brigade Combat Team, was on hand for the grand opening. We cannot succeed if we do this alone. We must have the support and assistance of the Iraqi people. The Iraqi people must become involved in the security of their neighborhoods by reporting those that conduct murders, attacks on security forces, and have weapons caches. This is but the first step in creating a modular quick response force that can better serve the people of Iraq. Now keeping our feet firmly planted in the Dora district, the market there used to be known as a great place of commerce. But since the insurgency began to sink into the quagmire of weapon smuggling and IED making that has plagued the capital city. But 2nd Infantry Division troops have been working hard to clean up the market. The Iraqi army helps us out because uh, the more, the more, there, there are more eyes on the ground. It helps us accomplish our mission. Basically, uh, the longer we've been here inside the market, the more we've seen people come out because it's been a safer place for them to come, uh, shop, uh, and also for people to come work, earn the money they need to support their families, and uh, buy the things they need. Now, IEDs are a problem soldiers face every day. Army Sergeant Holly Jensen takes us out with a group of soldiers that literally stumbled on an IED and thwarted a possible attack. This story begins with a failed attempt to harm innocent people going up in smoke. A soldier with the 2-3 Striker Brigade combat team noticed a wire running across the road where his unit and Iraqi Army soldiers were conducting operations. At that point, we uh, cordoned off the area, uh, traced the uh, wire back to its source, and found the uh, initiator and battery. The soldiers wasted no time searching for the source, and it didn't take long for the residents to start talking. What's he saying? Huh? Well, he told me it is not the first time. Uh, it's some guys, he, uh, he come with truck, the truck uh, tied his uh, friends, Dio, on the Toyota. He's come here to put Back his up. ID, to put his ID here, and he's gone. The message here resonates not only with the soldiers on patrol, but throughout the entire Baghdad area. We continue to tell the guys, the, the soldiers, to meet, to stay vigilant when they're out on patrol, when they're walking, when they're mounted in a vehicle, when they're working with the Iraqi army. And after six months, sometimes that's a challenge. Uh, so that we're, that's one thing we fight every day is complacency. We try to make sure that the soldiers stay focused on every mission regardless of what they're doing. Thanks to these soldiers, no one will ever know how many lives they saved today. Sergeant Holly Jensen, 7th MPAD, Baghdad. The Iraqi army is trained to become a force of their own. Army Private Ashley Torres takes us on a mission where the U.S. Army troops step back to let the IA take the lead. Coming out here, I mean, how could you not be I mean, happy? It's a beautiful day. Uh, walked around the countryside and they're finding caches and detaining terrorists. Soldiers from the 6th Iraqi Army Division have worked hard at the missions they do. Everybody talks about the IA being terrible soldiers, but I mean, you saw it today. They moved here in the dark. Uh, they were tactically proficient. And they nabbed all their targets. There wasn't any uh, stray fire. There was no negligent discharges. There was no incidents whatsoever. So uh, I can't see how you'd be anything but happy. With little help from a military transition team, the Iraqi Army have become more independent. I'm very happy with my guys. I'm proud with them. We have uh, we got more information. There is more cash in this village. Therefore, we make a coordination between us and the coalition forces 2-5. Therefore, today we are in this area to look for uh, cash. With the Iraqi army becoming more effective, the anti-Iraqi forces, or AIF, might have a problem. Every time they find something else, it uh, inhibits the AIF's movement, freedom of movement. They know that the IA guys are getting close to them. It also gives heart to the soldiers. So they can, they can see this cachet and look at a job well done, and they want to go out and do other missions and find more stuff. So this is, uh, in all aspects, it's been a very successful mission. 
Private Ashley Torres, 7th MPAD, Baghdad, Iraq. Coming up on Cav Country, we'll see how Iraqis are working to keep their vehicles rolling. The heart of the U.S. Army lies in its non-commissioned officer corps. In an effort to train the Iraqi Army, one of the second Blackjack Brigade's military transition teams decided to show them how we build successful leaders. Since their inception, the NCO board and education system have been some of the keys to the Army's strength. You know, we have such a robust NCO education system. You know, they, from specialists, they go to school. When they become a sergeant, they go to an NCO school. When they become a platoon sergeant, they go to, you know, another NCO school, all the way up through Sergeant Major. You know, and I think that's what makes our, our Army so strong. Because at every level, when they get promoted, they're going to another school. Right. You know, we're trying to instill that in the Iraqi Army. Education is key. So, to show the 5th Brigade Iraqi Army just how we create strong NCOs, the 356 MIT team held a mock promotion board. Today we conducted a, a mock promotion board under the American standard for the 5th uh, Brigade IA so they can see an example of how uh, we promote uh, soldiers to sergeants and sergeants to staff sergeants. And for 5th Brigade, it was the first time they had seen another way to promote their worthy soldiers. This is the first time we've done something like this here in this brigade. Uh, a lot of the first arms with the SAR Major and the, the Brigade Mid NCOIC, we came together and said, "Hey, why don't why don't we put this put this on for the uh, Iraqi Army to show them how we promote soldiers to SAR?" And what did they think? Today we learned a better way of promoting our soldiers. Today we. Got I hope that in the future we can do it like the Americans, and that the new army is going to be better and stronger with the help of the U.S. soldiers. This is just one more step in getting the Iraqi army back on its feet, ready to take over the mission in Baghdad. From FOB Honor Baghdad, I'm Specialist Kate Huff, 2nd Blackjack Brigade, 1st Cavalry Division. As Iraqi forces grow, they are having to grow their support structure as well. Army Sergeant Scott Patillo shows us how Iraqi vehicles are getting repaired. Whether the problem is a crumpled fender or a busted head gasket, the Iraqis at the Iraqi National Maintenance Contract Center can fix it. Iraqis at the facility repair their own equipment with the help of American advisors. The advisors assess damaged equipment and help the Iraqis improve their efficiency. Um, but some of the stuff that I provide as far as military vehicles, um, the faster ways to pull, pull an engine out of a Humvee, for example, um, the faster ways, you know, you put one guy up top, one guy down bottom, and you pull that engine out within, you know, six to seven hours instead of what they were doing. They had three and four guys on there, and it was taking them two and three days. The Wheeled Vehicle Repair Facility not only provides the Iraqi Army with the repairs it needs, it also provides much-needed jobs to the mechanics working there, an opportunity the mechanics feel strongly about. We as Iraqis are very grateful for everything you've done, and it's our part now to sincerely sacrifice for our country as you sacrificed for the well-being of others. When the time is right, the Iraqis hope to have facilities like this ready to independently support the Iraqi military. In the meantime, the Iraqis are building the base of skilled workers and equipment that they will need when they are on their own. Sergeant Scott Patillo, 7th MPAD, Camp Taji, Iraq. And that's Cav Country this week. Tune in again next time and we'll take you to the mean streets of Baghdad and battle a vehicle's most vicious foe, potholes. I'm Specialist Charlie Mabe, and from all of us here at Cav Country, good luck and Godspeed.